This right here is a species of dinosaur, a, a dinosaur Poseidon. It's found only in Oklahoma and it's actually only known from a few neck pieces. It's related to such animals as the Brachiosaurus. And what's kind of peculiar, this one is um, from a research paper I've read, is that it won a few that existed past the Jurassic period. Now, as I said, it's only known from a few neck pieces, but based on the neck structure, we know it has a um, related to um, specimens like Brachiosaurus, hence they gave a similar size head, which is total guesswork. But I hope they'll find more of this animal later to come. This here is a wonderful little um, hologram display here at the Sam Nolan Museum. It's showing um, holograms of the Precambrian life. Actually, very neat to watch. This here is one of the dioramas they have here at the Sam Nolan Museum. This one is of the Devonian time, featuring a gigantic Dunkleosteus against one of the possible prey items around this time. It's very neat to enjoy. This here is another one of the dioramas that here it has Sam Noble. This one I believe is in the Carboniferous Classic Swamp. I have one of the early amniotes over here, Ophiocodon. And over here, this large guy, this large millipede like creature, Arthropleura. Of course, they have it to where it just rises its head slower up and down. Very neat to watch. This right here is the early Permian exhibit here at the Sam Noble. We got an Adaphosaurus here, one of the early Pelicosaurus. Further along down, the famous Dimetrodon, who you see in all the children's books and dinosaurs. Even though it itself is not a dinosaur, it's more closely related to us. And what's another interesting part about this diorama, if we go down, a couple of amphibians down there, the one with the boomerang head on the left. Um, Diplocalus. Although I can't seem to find the identification of this other smaller guy here. I uh, hope I can find that soon. Goes around here. Now one of the earlier specimens of this time. Urops. <laughs> Remember having a little toy racer of this guy as a kid. Well, a friend of mine did anyway. Oh, here we go. The name of that little guy right there. Tremorarachus. Right. Of course, you have the dragon, the giant dragonfly here with a two foot wingspan. Yeah, they got that on display right here. Very big. Of course, they don't have the fossil display of it. But also on the other side here, Cotylorhynchus. This is um, the first fossil vertebrate found around the Norman area in Oklahoma. 
And of course, everybody noticed that it has a very tiny head. Of course, it's not uncommon of this group of animals at this time. This here is the one of the great exhibits here they have at Sam Noble. It is a duel between an Apatosaurus on the right and a Saurophagnex on the left. The Saurophagnex is also in the process of being renamed Allosaurus Maximus. It's a definitely large Allosaurus relative. Known from only a few pieces from found in Oklahoma, they found more, I believe, in northeastern New Mexico. And based on that is where they're giving it its new name, Allosaurus Maximus. This one right here is actually the Oklahoma State Fossil. What's also very neat about this one, and just last year they just they displayed this, it is in a little juvenile apatosaurus found in the same quarry as this big guy. About 11 feet long. This, along with the adult here, which is 98 feet long on the display, were found in the upper part panhandle, Cimarron County, I believe, of Oklahoma. Very large. <laughs> I'm kind of trying to get it all on the camera. I don't seem to have much room. Let's see if I can get a good headshot here. There it is. I'll post a video so I can get a bigger, um, a better close up of this head. And I'll show you how. But this right here, Oklahoma State Fossil. Known for one of the very large claws on its hand. This is around 40 feet long, almost as long as a T-Rex here. I think in one lecture that a scientist did, a paleontologist did over here, he says when it comes to the size between a T-Rex and others like Saurophagnix um, or Chicanotosaurus and all that, from that point who cares? Being chased by a lion or a tiger there, it doesn't really matter how big it is. <laughs> This here gruesome sight is a species of Deinonychus, which is a slightly older cousin of Velociraptor, taking on a family of Tenontosauruses. This is based on a very famous find here in Oklahoma, to where we found um, the Tenontosaurus, an adult, surrounded by remains of the young, and you find bits and pieces of teeth and such from Deinonychus. And this famous site here showed the, how these animals hunted in packs. And it showed animal behavior about adults caring for their young. Poor little guys. And that's nature for you. Now here's a species of ceratopsian called Pentaceratops. So named because it actually has five horns on its face. Three of the obvious ones above the eyes and the nose, and the, um, let's see, the, the other two are right on its lower jaw, on its back. Now this one actually has a Guinness Book of World Records attached to it as a largest land animal skull ever found. Ten and a half feet. Or 3.2 meters. And granted, it is quite an impressive skull. Let me see if I can back away and have a good look at it. I have to watch my step. Yes, quite huge. Now, the story I'm about to tell you was told by a volunteer and former paleontologist, Frank Lawrence. And what it was, this, this specimen was found in Oklahoma. I believe around the Panhandle again, like so many others. And it was, I think, around the 1930s or so. And unfortunately, due to lack of room and they just haven't gotten around to it, they kept it underneath the football stadium for quite a number of decades. Now, originally, they were about to expose, um, you know, they were going to take these out 
take him out of Rock Matrix and show him on display in the fossil prep preparation lab as an example to a net future students and paleontologists about um, how, you know, what they could accomplish through their actions. And what happened is, is um, they heard that they were getting a new museum, Sam Noble, the new building that can hold this, so they'll take it out and put it on display. The body came out great. The head, unfortunately, was completely crushed due to the strata over time. All in pieces. So, um, they didn't know what to do. I mean, it was kind of devastating. You see, imagine all this in hundreds and hundreds of pieces. I mean, you, you know, it's kind of, where do you begin? Well, fortunately, right about here, um, on this outer crest, they found a long piece of it. And like a jigsaw puzzle, you could start from there. Now at the time, um, in order to put this thing together, they had sort of this white putty they put in between each piece. And you know, once it sets, that held it together. And after time, they finally put it all together into one magnificent skull, as you see here. They were proud of themselves, they took pictures of it, they sent it to their friends. And because with all the white putty around it, they said it was the ugliest damn thing they have ever saw in their life. Because with all the white putty between all the pieces, it looked as if birds had been on it for 65 million years instead of the animal actually lived over 65 million years ago. Of course, it doesn't look like that now, because you, know, you can paint and stain it to where it all shows up as one color. I've heard this story two or three times from a man. Uh, I don't even know if he's still around anymore. I saw him once since I moved down here, but still a great story.